Let's start with a scenario. A father and a son are in a horrible car crash that kills the dad. The son is rushed to the hospital. Just as he's about to go under the knife, the surgeon says, I can't operate, that boy is my son. How is this possible? Take a few seconds to think about your gut response to this scenario. Do you have it? The correct answer is that the surgeon is the mother, or maybe a second dad. Were you surprised by your first response to this riddle? I'm even embarrassed to say that as a self-identified feminist, I didn't figure it out right away, but I also know it's pretty common. Bias and prejudice are not just reserved for people who are openly racist or sexist. That is called explicit bias, but many of us have bias without even knowing it, something called unconscious or implicit bias. While there are slight differences between the two, the overarching definition of these terms is prejudice or unsupported judgment in favor of or against one thing, person or group, as compared to another, in a way that is usually considered unfair. It can end up benefiting some groups over others, often based on things like gender, race, religion, sexual orientation, and other factors. Where do these biases come from? Well, they start forming very early on, from the culture around us, messages we see in the media, subtext, watching people interact with one another, Already by the age of five, children can have pretty strongly entrenched ideas about minorities, women, and other social groups. Think about it. Maybe you can look back and remember being a small kid and your mom quickly locking the car doors because someone of a particular race walked by. Or maybe you only saw images on TV and movies of men in certain jobs, like doctor or pilot, so you don't connect those jobs with women. Think back to the hospital riddle. Another type of bias we possess is confirmation bias, which has become even more of a problem now that social media algorithm pumps us with the information we want to see and hear. Confirmation bias is when we deliberately search for, agree with, and even better remember ideas and arguments that confirm the beliefs we already had, instead of actively challenge those beliefs or being open to new ones. You may have heard of the filter bubble effect, where online algorithms guess what we want to see based on our belief and preferences and make sure we keep seeing those type of things, ending up in some kind of intellectual isolation. There are forces at work beyond our control that only help to underline our existing assumption. So what does this have to do with education? Well, having an implicit bias can affect student outcomes, especially for minority or female students. For instance, which students are encouraged to take higher level math or science, this can come from our assumption about groups on a subconscious level. And as we tend to favor our in-group, the group we feel we belong to, we may unknowingly disadvantage those who belong to other groups. A common response to the issues of avoiding discriminatory practices in a culturally diverse classroom is to try to be colorblind and disregard differences as a way to avoid prejudice. As well intentioned as this can be, we don't recommend it, not only because we don't think it's realistic, but also because we believe you'd miss out on one of the most enriching elements of online teaching. Also, teachers of immigrant students who hold multicultural beliefs over colorblind ones tend to be happier and more motivated in their work, and that outcomes for culturally diverse students are better too.